Hello everyone, welcome back to the Action RPG Lessons. In lesson number three, we'll be looking at making stuff happen when we press buttons. Being able to interact with the game is important. We call that input. So when we're coding for input, we don't want to do so at the start of the game because that only happens once and never again. That means it's pretty limited for the player to interact with the game. What we want to do is check for it in the loop when the game is running. So when we're coding for input, we need to check if the player is pressing any buttons. And this is called a condition. And in order to check for a condition, we need to use what we call an if statement. Now using an if statement also allows us to create an effect when that condition is true. The way we write out an if statement is like so. We say the word if, and then we put in our condition, and then a colon at the end. And notice when I go to the next line, it's spaced out a little bit. Any code I put here is going to be part of the if statement, and it's going to happen when that condition is true. So we call this the effect. You can have as many effects as you like. As long as it's spaced out like this, it's going to be part of that if statement. If we want to get out of the if statement, all we have to do is press backspace to be right up against the wall. And notice how this little guide ends there. So, what kind of condition are we looking for? It's not the word condition, that's for sure. Well, we want to check if the player has pressed a button. Pixelpad has a function we can use for that called key was pressed. So instead of the word condition, we're going to say key underscore was underscore pressed. Now inside these brackets and an apostrophe, we're going to check which button the player has pressed. For this, let's check if the player presses the space bar. So inside these apostrophes, press the space bar once. Now to us, that looks like a blank space. But to the computer, what that means is we're checking for the space bar to be pressed. And I only want one effect for this. What I'm going to do first is I'm just going to print a message. So whenever we press the space bar, we're just going to show a message down in the console. For that, we use the keyword print, and then inside the brackets and apostrophe, the message we want to type. Now you can say any message you want. I'm just going to use a standard hello world. Something coders like to do when they're first experimenting with some code. And when I press play and I press the space bar, hello world shows up in the console. You can press this as many times as you want. It'll show up every time. And it only shows up when you press the spacebar, not any time else, even though it's inside the loop. This is because in the loop, we're always running this if statement. We're always checking if the player presses the spacebar. And only if they do, we print that message. All right, so let's actually get the player moving. We're going to do this inside the player class. So click on player and go to the loop. And here's where I'll be writing an if statement to move the player. First, let's check if the player is trying to move up. Now, instead of using the key was pressed, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check if the player is holding down the button. For that, we use key underscore is pressed. And for my game, I'm going to check if they're pressing the W key to move up. Now you can use any key you like, and if you want to use the arrow buttons, you'll write it like so. Arrow up. And the rest will be arrow right, arrow down, arrow left. I'm going to switch back to using W. So what do I want to happen if I'm holding down the W key? Well, I want to increase the player's y value 
to make them go up. So I say self dot y plus equals one. Remember, when we're coding inside the player, we use the word self. Let's go ahead and try this out. If I hold down the W key, I start moving up. Perfect. We want to make an if statement for each direction. Now remember, when we want to exit this one, we make sure we're right up against the wall. And I'm going to leave a little space in between to make my code easier to read. You can have as many empty lines as you want, and Pixelpad won't complain about that. So here I'm going to check if we want to move down, if I'm pressing the S key. And if so, I'm going to decrease the Y. Next, I'll check if I'm trying to move right, And I'll use the D key for that. Now in order to move right, I need to increase the X. And finally, if I want to move left, I want to use the A key and then decrease the X. And just like that, we've got a player that can move in all directions. Now you might find them a little bit slow. We can increase the speed just like how we did for the bat. We just use a bigger number. There we go, that looks great. Let's add one more feature to our player. Whenever we change the direction of the player, we can also change his sprite so he looks in a different direction. In order to do that, we need to look at the asset store again. Head back to where we found the hero sprite and add the other directions. We have a hero left, a hero right, and a hero up. So I'm going to call this one player left and player right. And player up. There we go. If you want to rename this one, just double click it and you can give it a new name. I'm going to call it player down now. Now that we have a bunch more options. Another cool feature you can do is you can drag and drop them to organize them so we can have all the player sprites together. Just like that. So inside the player loop, when we press a specific direction, I'm going to match the sprite to that direction. So if I press the W key, I'm going to say self.sprite is equal to sprite player up dot png. And if you want to save yourself some time, you can copy and paste this into each other direction and adjust which sprite you use. So if I press the S key, I'm going down. If I press the D key, I'm going to the right. And if I press the A key, I'm going to the left. One thing we need to fix before we press play is that the first time we set the sprite inside the game start, we were just using player.png. So if you changed it like I did, you're going to have to head there and adjust your code because player.png doesn't exist in our sprite list anymore. I have to switch it to player down.png. 
There it goes. Now if I press a direction, my player looks in that direction. Perfect. So we're able to move around, but we're not able to interact with anything yet. The bat doesn't hurt us or anything, and the, we're not able to collect the gems. We'll be looking at how to make that work in the next lesson using collisions. I'll see you there. Hello everyone! Welcome back to the Action RPG Lessons! In lesson number three, we'll be looking at making stuff happen when we press buttons.